This delicious four-day vegan meal prep is specifically designed to combat the six most common challenges of menopause. Hot flashes, muscle loss, mood swings, fatigue, inflammation, and an increased risk of osteoporosis. And if you're not someone experiencing menopause, make no mistake, this is an incredible protein-packed meal plan for everyone. Coming in at just over 1,800 calories, every single day contains 100 grams of plant protein and meets all of your nutritional needs without supplementation, including protein powder. What if menopause could be the start of your best years yet? To help make that happen, this meal prep was specifically designed by one of our team's registered dietitians, Taylor, with menopause-empowering, science-backed ingredients. To download all these recipes plus a grocery list, you can click the first link in the description. All right, let's jump in. I don't like spending my entire day in the kitchen meal prepping, so what we're gonna do is start with the ingredients that take the longest first, and then we're gonna go and prepare the rest of our meals. We'll start by adding three quarters of a cup of jasmine rice and about one cup of water to our rice cooker, so it's done by the time that we assemble this meal. If you don't have a rice cooker, you can cook this on the stove according to the package directions. Now we're going to prep and chop our veggies. Dice up one onion, chop two medium sweet potatoes into half inch pieces, and chop off the stems and have about five cups of Brussels sprouts. Cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and broccoli contain powerful compounds that play a role in estrogen metabolism, potentially easing some of the low estrogen related symptoms like hot flashes and mood swings. All right, now we have some ingredients prepped to keep things moving quickly throughout this meal prep. Now let's dive in and make our lunch, which is lentil harvest salad. Here are all of our ingredients for lunch. While the lentils and our other prepped ingredients cook, we're gonna be making our sriracha tahini dressing, which we're gonna use for both lunch and dinner. First, preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and line two baking sheets with parchment paper. Add the Brussels sprouts halves to a large mixing bowl with two tablespoons of maple syrup, a quarter cup of coconut aminos, and two teaspoons each of both garlic powder and chili powder. Toss to combine and set aside for a few minutes to marinate. All right, let's try this out. That's really good. Mmm, it's actually, that's a very nice taste. Good work, Taylor. Add the chopped onion to a large nonstick pan on the stove over medium heat and saute for about five minutes. Then add one and two thirds of a cup of dry brown or green lentils and five cups of water. Bring to a boil, then reduce the heat and simmer for 20 to 30 minutes until the lentils are tender. While that's cooking, add Brussels sprouts to one of the sheet pans. Then add the sweet potatoes to the same bowl and toss in the remaining marinade. Place them on the other sheet pan. Place them both in the oven and bake for 35 minutes. While all that's cooking, we're gonna make our sriracha tahini dressing. This is not something that I normally have. I normally don't have tahini, except if it's in hummus and really don't have sriracha. This is something that Taylor whipped up, so I'm excited to try it. Starting with a third cup of water in a small bowl, whisk together three tablespoons of tahini. Whoa, it's like some kind of art project. Actually, it looks like intestines right now. Oh, it was cool, now I made it gross. Three tablespoons of sriracha, three tablespoons of lemon juice, one and a half tablespoons of maple syrup, and three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. All right, taste test time. Got a little bit of a kick, nice and creamy. If you'd like to have it a little less spicy, then just cut back on the sriracha. When the 35 minute timer is up, check on the Brussels sprouts. If they are brown and crispy, remove from the pan and set aside. If they're not, leave them on the pan and place them back in the oven with the sweet potatoes, checking occasionally. Divide the cooked lentils and onion evenly between four meal prep containers. They should come out to about one and a half cups each of cooked lentils and onions. Divide the sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts evenly between the four containers. We have now finished prepping our lunches. We have all the cooked ingredients in individual containers. When you go to eat your lunch every day, you're gonna add two cups of arugula, one tablespoon of cranberries, half a tablespoon of hemp seeds, and one serving of our sriracha tahini dressing, which is 34 grams. You're welcome to eat this as a cold salad or you could warm it up. And if you wanna do that, you could throw all of these into a saucepan and combine with the arugula to wilt it a little bit and have a nice cozy harvest bowl. Let's try a taste test. It's got a really nice blend of different flavors. You get a little bit of the kick from the sriracha tahini dressing, and it also tastes really fresh, and obviously it's packed with tons of nutrition. So I'm gonna go enjoy this, and that's how you make these meals. 
For breakfast, we're gonna be making deliciously creamy green maca smoothies. I eat a lot of smoothies, and one thing that I love to do is have frozen spinach and frozen bananas ready to go at all times. Once bananas become ripe and speckled, if I don't go through them, then I'll chop them up and throw them into the freezer. I also love taking containers of spinach and putting in the freezer. It's gonna last way longer than it does fresh, and I pretty much just use spinach for smoothies. With that being said, you're welcome to use fresh bananas and fresh spinach for this because we're gonna be freezing it anyways. So let's line up four containers. To each one, add one cup of spinach, two thirds of a cup of frozen pineapple chunks, one sliced banana, so I was portioning out these ingredients and realized that I was making the same mistake that I made before, which is putting raw ingredients right onto the Pyrex container. If you do that and then you put it into the freezer, then it gets stuck and you have to kind of scrape it off. So what I would recommend is you either take some parchment paper and you line whatever container you're putting it into, but actually a better solution that I found is using freezer bags. So I'm gonna take these ingredients and put them in freezer bags and it's gonna be much better when I go to make my smoothies one tablespoon of sun butter for vitamin E, two tablespoons of hemp seeds, one tablespoon of ground flax seed. As you add these ingredients, try to keep the sun butter from sticking to the freezer bag seal. So we're adding ground flax seed, which has been shown to reduce inflammation and some symptoms of menopause. All right, now we're gonna be adding some maca. Maca is a root vegetable that's super healthy and native to Peru. Although more clinical trials are needed, there is some evidence to suggest that the consumption of maca may help to alleviate some menopause symptoms such as mood swings, depression, and anxiety. So every morning when you're ready to make your smoothie, you're gonna add one and a quarter cup of soy milk or about 300 milliliters. And when you're making this smoothie, soy milk is the perfect choice because it contains isoflavones and studies have proven that isoflavones can help reduce some of the symptoms of menopause, such as hot flashes. It's really creamy. Tastes like really subtly sweet ice cream. Next, we're gonna make tofu kimchi rice bowls. Kimchi is a traditional Korean fermented veggie and it's also a probiotic food. This means that it's great for your gut and a healthy gut means reduced inflammation and better hormone regulation. Cube two blocks of firm or extra firm tofu into about one inch pieces. So with this tofu, we're getting another serving of isoflavone rich soy in our dinner on top of the soy milk that we had in our green maca smoothies. And this is really important because soy has been proven to promote bone health, which is really important for helping you to avoid osteoporosis, which is a concern in menopause. Add two tablespoons of coconut aminos, a quarter cup of rice vinegar, then add two teaspoons of garlic powder, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, and two tablespoons of arrowroot flour. The arrowroot flour allows us to make nice and crispy tofu without using oil. But if you don't have any, you can just use cornstarch. Put the lid on and toss together. Add tofu to the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set a timer for eight minutes. Then toss or flip and cook for another eight minutes until brown and crispy. While the tofu is in the air fryer, add about an inch of water to a pan over medium heat and bring to a boil. Remove the outer leaves of about 340 grams of baby bok choy. Chop right down the middle. Slice off any protruding part of the stem to create a flat surface, but be careful not to slice too much and separate the leaves. This is actually my first time ever making it and I was told that they're done in three to five minutes. So you really don't wanna step away from the stove. Steaming bok choy is a great way to preserve its nutrients. They're done when the white parts are tender and you can test that out by using a fork. Once the water is boiling, add the bok choy with leaves facing up. Add the lid and steam for three to five minutes until the white parts are tender. Then remove from heat and set aside. Now add minced garlic to a skillet over medium heat with a splash of water to prevent sticking. Cook for a few minutes until fragrant, then add two tablespoons of coconut aminos and mix to combine. Turn off the heat and add your bok choy to the pan. Toss the coat in the coconut aminos garlic mixture. We already cooked our rice and made the dressing earlier, so let's evenly divide the rice between four meal prep containers. Divide the bok choy and cooked tofu between the four meal prep containers. And when you're ready to eat your dinner every day, you're gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of kelp for iodine, a third of a cup of kimchi for gut health, and you're gonna add one serving of the sriracha tahini dressing, which is about 34 grams, and then you're also going to add some cilantro to taste. 
I'm a really big fan of adding crunchy things. The kimchi and bok choy, fabulous addition. Does have a nice kick. Again, if you do not like spicy things, I don't really like spicy things and this is okay, but it is a little on the upper side of my normal spice limit. So if you wanna reduce the spice a little bit, just cut back on the sriracha. But overall, really great dish. I absolutely love tofu rice and the kimchi and bok choy are a fabulous addition. Next, we're gonna make our snacks for the week, which is blackberry chia seed pudding. Chia seeds are a fantastic source of plant-based omega-3 fatty acids, which have long been shown to reduce inflammation and improve brain health. Studies like this 2019 randomized control trial have even shown that a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids can reduce the symptoms of menopause, such as hot flashes. To a blender, add two cups of blackberries, one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of maple syrup, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of vanilla soy milk, and half a cup of chia seeds. Blend until smooth. Let's do a quick taste test. You're supposed to let it sit in the fridge for an hour before you eat it, but we'll live on the edge. It's very nice. Tastes very fresh and tastes very good. All right, so the chia seeds in here will absorb all the moisture and create a really nice pudding-like consistency. So when you're ready to eat these, you can top them with some blackberries or other fruit or whatever you want. All right, so that's it for our snacks. Let's dive into a nutrition breakdown. We hit our goal of 100 grams of plant protein and we met every single target for our essential amino acids. A higher plant protein intake combined with resistance training exercise has been well established as vital for maintaining muscle mass, muscle strength, and bone strength in postmenopausal women. Now let's look at some other key nutrients for bone health. We got plenty of calcium in this meal plan with our biggest calcium contributors from soy milk, tofu, bok choy, and chia seeds. This meal prep is also packed with vitamin K. In fact, the Brussels sprouts alone in the lentil harvest salad actually provided all the vitamin K that we need for the day. And we got magnesium from so many different foods, but especially hemp seeds, lentils, and chia seeds. Vitamin D is our sunshine vitamin, and it's the only nutrient that we can't necessarily get from food or sunlight year round, which is why it can be important to supplement. A vitamin D supplement can help you to meet your needs to support bone health and overall health, and the recommended daily intake for women between 19 to 70 years young is at least 600 IUs daily. Low estrogen levels can lead to fatigue, so it's important to focus on adequate intake of nutrients that can support your energy levels, like all of our B vitamins and iron. And as you can see, we got plenty of both. Now let's look at our omega-3 fatty acids, which are important for brain health, as well as reducing inflammation. Chia seeds, ground flax seeds, and hemp seeds are the three best sources of plant-based omega-3s, and we got all three of them in this meal prep. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to have at least one of these in your diet every day. This meal plan is packed with fiber with 55 grams per day, which is more than double the recommended minimum intake for women. As we mentioned earlier, your gut plays a crucial role in hormone regulation and inflammation, so a healthy gut can help to ease some of your menopause symptoms. And our guts love dietary fiber. And then other nutrients we don't necessarily measure are phytochemicals, phytoestrogens, and antioxidants in plant foods that make this meal prep a fantastic way to help manage your menopause symptoms. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are a plant-based woman in her 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s, then we just launched a brand new course called Menopause Mastery that will help you to thrive through menopause and beyond. For a limited time, we're giving away spots for free to join Menopause Mastery. Click the link in the description to learn more. Here's your Menopause Mastery instructor, Dr. Daphne Bascom, with a quick preview. Menopause isn't an end. It's a powerful beginning. I'm Dr. Daphne Bascom. I'm 57 years young, and I am in the best shape of my life. What if menopause could be the start of your best years yet? That's why we created Menopause Mastery. We've combined expert knowledge with real life experiences to create a program that adapts to your life, not the other way around. Our goal is to empower you with the knowledge and habits you need to thrive through menopause and beyond. Menopause Mastery is more than a program. It's a commitment to yourself. As a dedicated vegan physician and health and fitness coach, I'm here to support and lead you through this remarkable phase of life. I would tell women in their 40s, 50s, and beyond who feel that their best years are behind them 
that their best years are yet to come, and that by understanding how to navigate perimenopause and menopause, that they can actually achieve the life, the body, and the dreams that they desire and that they deserve. So when I hit 40, um, life was not great. I was in the process of getting divorced, probably drinking a case of wine a week, um, living off of potato chips. If I didn't do something different, nothing was going to get better as I got older. I want women like me, whether they're in their 30s or in their 70s, to realize that you have it within you to change. To learn how you can get free access to Menopause Mastery, click the link in the description. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.